Western pilots, Suzy Air represents a stepping stone to fulfill their dreams of flying for a commercial airline. As well as flying in the remote heartlands of Papua with its dense jungles and rocky mountains, they also fly from Indonesia's biggest cities, including the hectic metropolis of Medan. Captain Dave Burns is on his morning commute to the airport. Hi. Dai mana. Oh my god. Formerly a burger flipper and car salesman, he gave it all up and now lives the high life in Indonesia. Being a pilot out here is is like being a king. We have maids that do our laundry, we have cooks that cook our meals, we live in nice houses, we've got a swimming pool next to the house. At this airport, Dave shares the runway with the big jets he dreams of flying back home. The big ambition after Suzy Air is to go and fly a big jet. You know when you made it, when the front wheel of the plane is behind you. That ambition means so much because I've wanted this since five years old to be a jumbo jet captain. Medan director, Pavikolo Bravo, Victor Golf. Today, Dave is flying a round trip from Medan to Rembele and back again. And he has a very important cargo on board. His mum, Margaret. It's a proud day. She is getting to see her son captain a plane for the first time. Uh, reset climb up especially as the dream seemed over when he left school at 17 without taking his A-levels. As a boy, I was, I was a typical lad. I dropped out of school. I turned my part-time job in McDonald's to a full-time job. Yeah, mom and dad were proud. Was he a little bit of uh, a troublemaker? He's just got a mind of his own sometimes, and whatever we used to say, he would literally just do what he wanted. Um, I completely disagree with that. What, you're a troublemaker? I'm not a troublemaker. My sister would say that, right. and you would say that, but Grandma would never say that. Put it this way, you weren't a troublemaker, but you gave us plenty of grief one way and another. Oh, yes. You shouldn't really be saying this with uh, me at the controls of the plane and you sitting in the bad mother. And get rid of flight director, please, if you're happy. Having landed safely, Dave discovers there's an even more important passenger on the return flight. The Bupati, or district head of the entire Aceh province. Now I need to pay him the utmost respect. Treat him really as a VIP, because at the end of the day, the guy sitting there is the guy who awards all the contracts to Suzy Air for this area. That speed is a lot tricky. And 69. With Suzy Air contracts potentially at stake, the pressure's on Dave to make today's flight as trouble-free as possible. The area that he governs is the size of the UK, so he has a lot of power. He is the David Cameron of Ache. I would say because we're flying uh, the governor, I like to think myself as being Air Force One of Ache. But the most challenging part of any flight is yet to come, the landing. And in Maidan, it's notorious for a specific hazard. When I flew here last week, we uh, were coming into land for about 100 feet off the uh, runway. A flock of birds flew up, and uh, I had a uh, bird go through the, uh, through the propeller, through the engine. And luckily, because I had the inertial separator pulled, it came out the side and the bits of uh, the, the roast chicken was served down the left-hand side of the plane. Bird strikes are not the only threat. On the approach, the winds have picked up. So it's a tough crosswind. 15 knots from right to left. The Cessna caravan can only handle a crosswind of 20 knots. Any more than that, and they won't be able to land. 500. Minimums. Minimums.
despite being buffeted by the winds. There's quite a uh, tough crosswind. Dave safely delivers both VIPs, the Bupati and his mum, to Maidan. 1,300 miles away from Sumatra, flying out of Tamika, Papua, 25-year-old Sam Quinn is back at the controls of a plane. Good is there traffic, Victor Victor Whiskey is a moment to Tamika, 8,000 feet radio. He had to wait two weeks before finally being declared clear of the potentially career-ending strain of malaria. There are some strains out there apparently in uh, like Papua New Guinea where it takes you, attacks your nervous system or something like that and you lose your medical, you can't fly anymore, but it's just one of those things, one of those risks out here in Papua that you just have to roll the dice and maybe you'll get it, maybe you won't. But having only just recovered from the malaria, the physical demands of flying are all the more challenging. Especially as with no autopilot, he has to be hands-on every step of the way. Yeah, we don't have autopilot, so we're just we're just used to like just flying the stick and rudder, basically. That's really tiring when you constantly, especially when you've got bad weather. You're just fighting the elements, and you're on low clouds, and you're just flying low, trying to get to the strip. Out here in Papua, you don't have a lot of leeway. Like uh, if things go go wrong in Papua, they go wrong pretty damn quickly. Sam's flying from Tamika to Bayoga, a village deep in the mountainous heartland delivering government-subsidized food and medical aid to the Damal people. But the landing in Bayoga is a tough one. The strip, built by the villagers, is cut into the side of the mountain. Cloud cover regularly builds up, obscuring the landing and making the final approach treacherous. Yet is uh, because there's just basically a cloud layer all the way up the strip, and uh, I do try and make an approach, and the weather just turns worse, and I, I'll just be flying blind, and I overshoot the runway, I'll just crash into the top of the hill, basically. That'll be it. Game over. Once Sam commits, he has to be confident of getting through the clouds to make a safe landing. There's no turning back. gap of the cloud and managed to make it in, no worries. But we were committed at one point. Once you saw the runway, once we're below a certain altitude, there's no, if someone runs out in the middle of a runway, you can't go around, so you just plow into them, you know? If the dog comes out, you just run over, like, just deal with the consequences later, eh? The airline introduced this as a rule after a co-pilot lost his life trying to avoid a man on the runway in 2011. Sam needs to oversee a quick turnaround, unloading the food and medical aid for the isolated Damal community. Papuans have farmed the highlands for thousands of years, but the new foods and medicines are an important supplement. Pilot and unload, eh? Just get some exercise in. Leaving Bayoga on the return journey to Tamika are a young mother and her child in need of medical attention. Obviously, 
obviously there's no hospitals over there or anything like that, so we're going to just take them to, to meet them. They're just going to have a quick trip to the hospital, make sure they're all right. Yeah, there's not really much healthcare out here in the jungle, eh? like uh, usually the Papuans, they just leave it to the last minute, so once I saw this lady with gangrene on her leg and, leg and it was spreading everywhere and we just asked her, why didn't you come out earlier, why didn't you come out earlier, and they're like, oh, we didn't know, we didn't know. For Sam, the chance to serve these remote tribal communities is an incredibly rewarding experience. Something he'll miss if he one day decides to fly jets back home. Flying out here in Papua, the tribes do depend on us actually bringing them all their basic supplies. Without us, life for them would be a lot more tough, really. But at the end of the day, it is pretty nice doing a job that actually helps other people out. Flying in Indonesia may be challenging, but it's not without its perks. Dave's brought his mum to see his luxury accommodation. Here's where we live. This is, uh, this is our house, uh, H9. With a team of staff on hand to care for his every need, Dave is living the dream. This is Jocko, right? My favourite guy in the company. Cooks some awesome food. All of us seem to have like, put on more weight and we've become more fat. It is, it's his fault. <laughs> After working in fast food, Dave now has a chef to cook his meals, as well as someone to do his washing and cleaning. Mate comes in, tidies everything up, washes all the sheets. Basically, the, does the job that you didn't do when I was at home and that you made me do. See, when he comes home, he won't be able to get back into the real world, you know, having his, um, his maid. Ready, Ed? Being driven to work and having the use of a gym and pool is a far cry from Dave's life back home. Life is great out here. People from home describe it as one big holiday. Yes, we, we do have a very serious job to do, but everything outside is one big party. Sam Quinn is on another solo mission through the cloud-covered mountains of central Papua. Today, he's flying into Agadugame. At 9,000 feet, it's one of the highest strips on the island of Papua and would sit one-third of the way up Mount Everest. Stall. Stall. Many of the Highland people still dress in traditional ways, which can be a surprising culture shock to the young British pilots. Out here, the tribal people, they wear the kodakas here. This is just a traditional dress out here. Back home, we wear trousers and t-shirts and everything. The kodaka has a penis cover. We're at 9,000 feet, it's bloody cold up here. I wonder how they do it, eh? Must shrivel up. <laughs> Why are they bigger? It's a different sort of design, basically. It's not because I got a bigger dick or something like that, it's just more storage space. That's where they stash everything right up in there. What, so it's like, like a kind of a bag? Yeah. Another pilot actually, someone tried to give him money from his Kodaka and he was just like, place it on the table. No thanks, mate. Yeah. You can see the old guys as well. That's probably the last of the Kodaka, whereas like no one else around here is wearing them. Like They're probably thinking it's too bloody cold. It's just fading away. Eventually, they're just going to adapt adapt to that, the Western life. <laughs> hey, see you later. Gonna miss you. Hey. <laughs> Sam's thoughts turn to his future. He is hoping a visit from his father can help him make a big career decision. I'm just asking some advice of uh, my old man. He's going to be coming out soon, so I'll just be good to have a chat with him. At the moment, I'm just pondering on what I actually want to do. I do want to get go to a commercial. At the moment, I'm like, just enjoying it way too much for my own good. Dan, Dave is out with his mum to celebrate his 28th birthday. 
Lovely. Thank you very much. Thank you. As well as the luxury life that being a Suzy Air pilot affords, there's other benefits for Dave, like his Malaysian air hostess girlfriend, Nadia. Let's be honest, Asian women are hot. I think if, if I was in England, I would probably end up with a, with a complete munter. What did you have when you were here with your mum? Cheesecake. Cheesecake. <laughs> okay, well, see, he's healthy. Nadia and Dave met six months ago when he asked for her number on a flight she was working on. He might be a very grumpy English man that I have to deal with every day, but he is very, very genuine. He has a big heart and he is... I mean, he's kind of cute, don't you think? With the little chubbiness, with the whole Buddha, Buddha, Buddha belly going on. All black pepper is for me, thank you. And he misses the curry, surprisingly, because curry is like, it's an Asian thing, but then again, Apparently in Birmingham, it's, it's what you guys always have, right? It's like a delicacy or something. Having originally travelled here to increase his chances of a job back home, Dave has now fully embraced life in Indonesia. So much so, one day he may be flying home with a lot more than the 20 kilogram suitcase he arrived with. I think when people join Suzier that they think they're going to be out here for a year maybe while the market picks up so they can go and look for another job. People will never think in a million years that within those few years that you'll end up with an Indonesian wife, a half Indonesian child. For example, last year there must have been seven weddings and six Suzier babies. Hi, cheers. 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 It was nice meeting you, Nadia. There is a Pleasure to meet you as well. Thank you. But despite enjoying the lifestyle, Dave's still dreaming about his next move. If I was to move on from Suzia, because it's been such a unique experience, I need something completely new to move on to. Um, like, for example, big airline, big aircraft, just something, a new challenge. In Tamika, Papua, Sam Quinn is welcoming his dad, Ian, who knows the area well. He used to fly similar routes to his son in nearby Papua, New Guinea. How does it feel coming back here after flying, what, how long ago was it? It was uh, 20, well, 21, just turning 21 when I got up to New Guinea. And uh, that was just a big adventure. Ian then progressed to flying jumbo jets before recently retiring. He wants to know if Sam plans to follow him into a career at a commercial airline. I'm not really quite sure what I want to do next, to be honest. You're obviously enjoying it. Yeah, I love it out yeah, here, yeah. It's just yeah. the flying, the adrenaline rush, everything like that. Yeah. You're, you're your own boss, you fly by yourself. Yeah, well, that's, that's the thing, you're your own boss. I had, I had a bit, it was a bit like that for me in Papua New Guinea. Mm. Well, they sent me to a place and I was with my own boss, and it was just terrific. Oh, thunderstorm. Yeah. <laughs> yes. While he's visiting, Sam's dad has asked if he can come along for the day as one of his passengers. Now he's retired. And to wake up. He's not used to a 5 a.m. start. <laughs> uh, okay, thanks. It's uh, move your ass out. Even though Ian's aviation career spans 50 years, the time he spent in Papua New Guinea is fresh in his memory. It's about 45 years since I've done any bush flying, so I'm really looking forward to that. It'll be great. I, you know, I can't wait. It's just fascinating. Within 30 minutes of here, you're in another world, almost the lost world. You know, expect some of those places up there expect to see dinosaurs prancing around, and <laughs> like Jurassic Park. Sam's flying rice, water, and noodles to the Nduga village of Mapinduma, a 40-minute flight from Tamika. You think the whiskey three miles to the southwest of Sandy Park, 10,300. It's just spectacular, isn't it? It's beautiful, the ranges out here, really. Sam, did, uh, did your dad inspire you to become a pilot? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm interested to hear this. I'm waiting to hear this one. When he gave me that hours flying and a corner, I just yeah. fell in love with it. I just couldn't get enough of it. Yeah, once you get the bug, there's no stopping it. Yeah, exactly. I, do, I just can't understand why I everybody anyway, yeah. doesn't want to fly. I mean, it beats driving it on the M25, doesn't it? Uh, right, Sitting right in a bloody office. Bug a traffic, Victor, Victor Whiskey. Is there a welcoming committee here? <laughs> <laughs> The 
This will be the first time Sam's dad will get to see for himself just how much the local people value the air service and the link it provides to the outside world. What does wah wah mean? Uh, hello is wah. Yeah, wah wah. So they're wah. saying hello, welcome. And thank you is wah nore. And goodbye is Anne Nagiwa. I think, you know, you're, you're popular here because you're such a vital lifeline. Mm. A lot of people dream about doing this, but... Uh, not many people do it, right? Not many people do it. Mm. And you're the man. <laughs> All right, let's get rocking. Yeah, fantastic. Far from trying to persuade his son to return home, the day's flying has inspired Ian to think about coming out of retirement. I'm, I'm very, very impressed with uh, what you're doing down here. I think it's great. And also, I want your job. <laughs> <laughs> it's an awesome lunch, really. Yeah. It's a spectacular location. It's beautiful. Yeah. Like many Suzy Air pilots, Sam has thoughts of eventually flying big jet airliners in safer skies. But for now, Despite the drawbacks of living in the developing world, the excitement of flying in Indonesia is enough to persuade him to stay. To be honest, I couldn't imagine myself being anywhere in the world at this time. Maybe in the future I will join a commercial airliner, maybe not. Papua is just basically my new home. It's the best flying in the world. Next time, I'll be going through this. Let's go. Okay. Dave gets up close and personal with a volcano. If we fly for an ash cloud, it could shut down the engine. You're a little bit low. And new recruit Nick takes to the sky with his first passenger flight. Shit. 